uh, in terms of infrastructure, uh, we now have covered about 75% of all villages in Thailand with uh, fiber optics and high-speed internet. Uh, in Thailand, uh, there are 75, approximately 75,000 villages. Uh, we have less than 20,000 left uh, to, to wire. Uh, so we hope that uh, by the middle of next year, uh, Thailand, the whole country of Thailand would go broadband for the first time. Uh, after which, many useful applications such as e-commerce, e-service, uh, public health, uh, telemedicine can happen in a very meaningful way. Uh, number two, we have been uh, drafting a number of digital laws, uh, some of which have already been passed, some are in process, including cybersecurity, uh, data protection, uh, electronic transactions, for instance. Uh, number three, in terms of development, uh, it has been uh, uh, strategically planned uh, to coincide with uh, the government's Thailand 4.0 and especially the Eastern Economic Corridor, EEC. Uh, so from the point of view of digital, we have a uh, digital park at the uh, Sierra Cha district right in the middle of EEC so that we can, for the first time, uh, do innovation work uh, together with the uh, multinational companies as well as the Thai private sector ranging from IoT uh, smart city platform, uh, e-transaction platform, uh, 5G testbed, and so on. So these are uh, uh, going on. It has already been endorsed by the EEC committee, which incidentally, EEC has now become law. So the continuity would be there for sure. Uh, number uh, four would uh, be to deal with digital government, something very difficult, but uh, at the moment, we have come up with the first draft of the architecture design of one-stop service of the total government platform. Uh, this is very important because uh, apart from citizen services that would be, uh, would be very smooth in the future, but <clears throat> it would also provide a very good platform for ease of doing business. Last but not least, cybersecurity. Uh, uh, the law is under way at the moment, uh, but at the same time, we have now already uh, uh, pinpointed uh, five, uh, five areas of uh, critical information infrastructure uh, that we will work on uh, uh, very actively. Number one, of course, is the uh, financial infrastructure. Number two, energy. Number three, uh, telecommunications. Number four, transport. Number five, public health. and uh, hopefully, along the way, we can also uh, look into the public services uh, and their uh, network security as well. Uh, the second part that I would like to uh, initially uh, inform you, since this is not 2019 yet, but the gavel has already been passed to the prime, Thai, Thailand Prime Minister a few days ago. Uh, we have proposed and uh, pretty much endorsed by the preparation committee for, uh, for ASEAN uh, next year from the point of view of Thai proposals. In terms of uh, digital uh, ASEAN, uh, if, if I may, because there are a number of details, uh, give you the, the details. Uh, we call it ASEAN Digital Agil Agility Plan. ASEAN Digital Agility Plan. Uh, covering five areas. Uh, let me very quickly uh, give you uh, the, the topics. Uh, number one, cybersecurity. In terms of action for ASEAN next year, we are planning, but we certainly need the endorsement of our ASEAN friends. Uh, there are two activities under this theme. Number one, cyber war game. And that is to have an ASEAN-wide exercise uh, to practice uh, on cyber. We, 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 we are not uh, boasting or, or uh, try to publicize uh, because we don't want to be the target of the hackers in the future, but we need to prepare ourselves. Number two is uh, cyber personnel training. The fact that Thailand has now been 
endorsed to be the uh, center of personnel training, manpower training on cybersecurity, uh, the so-called ASEAN Japan Cyber Security Training Center is now hosted by the Ministry of uh, Digital Economy and run by the uh, uh, Electronic Transaction Development Agency or ETDA, ETDA. The second theme is with regard to smart city. And uh, here there are, again, uh, two activities that we are planning. Number one, uh, Singapore has been doing a, a great job in organizing uh, this year on uh, the nomination of smart cities uh, in ASEAN region. We now have 26 ASEAN smart cities uh, in, on the list. So next year, it would be so much fun and exciting if we can host the 26 cities to have a conference here in Thailand uh, to share experiences and to also get the private sector on board uh, if they can provide uh, systems and platforms and solutions. Uh, also, if we can along the way develop some kind of city data platform, that would be very useful, uh, especially if we can develop some kind of a city data platform guidelines so that ASEAN would have something to reference on. Theme number three, connectivity and mobility. Uh, we are planning to look into the ASEAN-wide submarine cable network linkage wherever possible. And as well as uh, the soft side, such as the ASEAN biometric visa applications, for instance. So uh, the fourth one is with regard to harmonization and alignment. Here we can do a lot. Uh, we have identified four elements that can be of interest to ASEAN friends. Number one, ASEAN data protection framework so that ASEAN member countries can align themselves uh, to, to this uh, important issue of data protection. Number two is ASEAN online enterprise to discuss ways and means of how member countries are looking at uh, online transactions. Uh, number three would be data governance framework, and this would be very useful, especially for the public sector. Last but not least for harmonization is ASEAN single window, mainly for import and export uh, facilitation. Uh, the next theme is with regard to people to people and the society. We also have four proposals. Number one is, and this will be fun also, ASEAN startup hackathon. It should be much fun. Uh, and and I, I would like to see more and more of a regional startup get together rather than just a single country uh, startup uh, promotion. Number two is social media review. Many headaches today, believe me. Number three is e-sport in ASEAN. Uh, I, I, I think uh, C is our member, is also a member here in this group. So. Maybe C can help us uh, 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 pro uh, doing this. And last but not least, on cyber bullying, uh, so that we can address some social issues along the way. Uh, and to and to uh, spearhead uh, all these proposals, uh, we also suggest that uh, next year it would be very nice if we can do two additional things on top of all these. Number one, ASEAN Digital Ministers Retreat, which is different from the tell me, tell some type of very bureaucratic thing. Uh, hopefully, we can bring all ministers to Phuket Island or Krabi and then keep them there. You know, they cannot escape and they would not want to escape. And then we will discuss in a, a, a sort of an open agenda uh, environment. That should be very interesting. Uh, uh, and number two, we need to get private sector involved as much as possible. So my proposal would be ASEAN eminent persons meeting, which could be public, private, or it could be just private. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is just, just the initial proposals. I hope some of these can uh, get approval uh, 
an agreement from ASEAN member countries. Probably not all can be done within 12 months, but Thailand is going to do our best. We have already been uh, conducting preparatory meetings for many times now. So I hope that uh, uh, Digital ASEAN of WEF would also play a big role uh, next year uh, in all ASEAN circuits and meetings. And I hope that uh, the agenda, the 405 agenda that uh, Digital ASEAN uh, has already come up with can be the fuel for discussion and for uh, uh, the real operations. So thank you very much and uh, thank you again Justin and World Economic Forum for, for organizing this in a, in a very continuing uh, uh, manner. This is the third time for this year already and uh, I commend you uh, uh, personally for having the passion to, to do this uh, for the benefit of the ASEAN community. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.